Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon, welcoming you to Trico's 15th edition. Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon and we're here for Trico's 15th edition. I'm delighted to have international cardiologist Luis Guzman with me here today. Could you start perhaps, doctor, by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Thank you for having us here, Welcome. having me and having everybody else. Uh, so I'm a professor of medicine, uh, actually changing uh, jobs in the next couple of days. So I um, will say that my new job, I'm professor of medicine at Wake Forest University in North Carolina. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. And I graduated from the Cleveland Clinic where I did my training. And then I've been for many years director of interventional cardiology, first at University of Florida, and then at the Virginia Commonwealth University. And now I'm moving to Wake Forest. So I've been on this for around many years. I don't want to say it's that many, but yeah, many years. <laughs> so again, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. And really, we really are honored to have you here. Um, you've been a participant this morning and for the day here at Trico in the live sessions. We've seen some really complex and exciting cases. Any thoughts on what you've seen today? Well, first of all, I will say that the level of the organization and the clarity and, and, and the technology that was displayed was at the highest level that you can have, which is very important for this type of meetings because basically it is a kind of educational activity that is based on imaging and live cases. Mm. That is not that common that is the entire meeting is, a, is about live case demonstration yes. and what we do on a, on a daily basis. I think that it is a tremendous strength of the, of the meeting that try to educate uh, the younger generations on what really happened in our life. And it's not something that we just talk about, but it's actually happening. So it's very important on that. So we have several cases this morning that uh, shows um, how uh, we can approach pretty much every single patient using mm. the radial artery, which is a, an artery that is in the wrist of the patient that um, from this small artery, we can go and do a lot of things in the heart. And today with the new developments, as well as the operator's experience, we are able to do pretty much everything using the radial artery, which we know that is a safer procedure mm. and is certainly more comfortable for the patient. Mm. So we have seen uh, cases in which uh, really um, in the past we wouldn't even attempt to do procedures mm. and sure enough this morning we have seen many of them that the operators which are extremely skillful have uh, opening arteries like in the left main uh, coronary artery which was considered a contraindication in the past and now is being done through the radial artery. We have done a chronic total occluded arteries uh, that it was uh, in the past would have been un unheard or even not thinking about doing it through the radial arteries. So I think we have uh, five or six cases this morning in which really provides a very good flavor of the magnitude of the um, complexity of patients that can be really through the radial mm. artery. And would you have any advice or, or messages for the young cardiologists coming through the ranks who are either watching us online today or who are actually attending Trico? So, yes, first of all, many uh, um, advices. So first of all, it's very important to understand that this is a learning process mm. and what you have seen this morning mm. might not be the bread and butter type of cases that mm -hmm. you want to start doing. Yes. Uh, so it is a gradual process of training mm -hmm. and it's very important to get your level of confidence mm -hmm. and comfort yes. before you pass to the next uh, level of complexity. Yes. Um, so 
always try to use the technology in your advantage. And as we show today, uh, imaging is very, very important mm. and use that in the planification and performance of your mm. procedures. The utilization of intravascular ultrasound or the utilization of uh, OCT, optical yes. coherent tomography, yeah. are very, very important mm. to guide your procedures mm. and allow you to make the right decisions. Mm. Uh, we have a case today in which um, the artery looked like it has a lot of calcium and we thought that we had to do use technology mm. A, atherectomy, mm. and then by using OCT we realized that the calcium was not as, mm. as much or was located in an area that would have allowed mm. us to do a different type of procedure which mm. probably was safer for the patient and sure enough we did the procedure in a safer way, mm. just guided. So try to use your technology in your advantage, go step by step in your learning process mm. and try to get a level of confidence and be comfortable to be able to pass to the next mm. level. Not everything I have seen today is a bread and butter thing that you want to go and do tomorrow. Mm. I think those are important and messages. You touched on OCT technology. It's crucial, it's vital. What are your thoughts on how it should be used on a daily basis for our young cardiologists? I think it is an extremely helpful um, technology that you need to be familiarized and you need to try to use it in your regular practice. It is always a challenge for everybody that does these type of procedures that they want to do things in a rush or they want to do things fast because they have other things to do and, and imaging, additional imaging will take some time off your body, will significantly help you first to understand what you're doing. It's a tremendous learning tool. Mm. So when you start to use these imaging modalities, OCT mm. and IBUS, but OCT has mm. a, many significant other mm. applications. Um, so it will teach you mm. what you are doing. So you are going to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And certainly by knowing what you are doing, you are going to provide better service for, for your patients. So it's a very important tool and hopefully they will use it in a, in a, in a important amount of the cases because it does make a difference. Mm. And, and moving on from, well, moving more in towards the arena of technology, we've seen robotics, obviously. Mm -hmm. Apex Heart Institute has performed, I think, over 500 procedures in just two years, which is the most amount globally, um, was really recently published in the Lancet after the Tay Robotic, the five procedures that, that were performed very recently. What are your views on telerobotics? So, certainly the way the medicine is evolving, mm -hmm. uh, this will be part of medicine and whenever we listen to the word robotics, everybody considers that things are going to go into that direction mm -hmm. and robotics is applied for many different things in any other, mm -hmm. uh, not in medicine, but in many other industries. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and in the last, two or three decades, it has been started to be applied into medicine as well. Um, I think it will have a significant impact in the way that we do and perform coronary interventions in the future. Yes. Uh, it has evolved tremendously in the last, let's say, five years. Uh, we use the initial versions of the robotics mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, which has a significant limitation for what we were able to do. Mm -hmm. The new devices uh, has provided a tremendous uh, advantages mm -hmm. and improvement that uh, certainly appears to be more for the prime time now yes. to be used in a more regular basis mm -hmm. in, in uh, many more patients. Mm -hmm. And there is a significant amount of development, mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. and uh, research that it has been done or is being doing at the present time mm. in trying to uh, get this technology to even a higher yes. level to be uh, able to apply to most cases. Mm. Interesting enough, you, the robotic is not only for the benefit of the operator that is exposed to less amount of radiation, but also to the benefit for the patient mm. that is also exposed to less radiation mm -hmm. as the study that you mentioned showed. But probably even more important is the ability to do this procedure from the distance. Mm -hmm. So you will not need to be there, you yes. can do this procedure. So 
it will allow us to have persons that are extremely skillful and uh, uh, able to do these procedures in more than one institution yes. and probably reach areas that otherwise exactly. we will not be able to reach. Exactly. That I'm pretty sure that for India that is a very significant and very important it is. that there will be many different areas that will be able to access to the type of treatment that otherwise they would not be able to access. Yes, absolutely. And before we end, I'd just like to ask you one last question. Trico, it's 2020, it's a new decade. Anything that you'd like to see on the agenda in the next decade at Trico? So it's been 15 years and uh, incredibly that in the last 15 years the um, amount of people, that the amount of patients that have been done with transradial approach has exponentially increased. Yes. Therefore, uh, these type of educational activities are very important mm -hmm. to be able to um, expose and train younger generations to do these type of procedures. I think in the next uh, decades, I don't, th I don't know if it's going to be a decade, probably going to be less than that. I think Trico can uh, be uh, advanced to uh, other, other areas, not only the transradial coronary intervention, okay. but other areas in the, in the percutaneous intervention okay. arena. So, so um, heart disease and uh, percutaneous intervention in heart disease has been tremendously uh, progressing mm -hmm. and developing over, over the last 10 years. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just no more coronary intervention. Mm -hmm. In the past, we used percutaneous coronary intervention. I think mm -hmm. uh, we are talking now about percutaneous cardiac intervention. Yes. And I think Trico will follow that path into other areas of percutaneous, in, percutaneous intervention of heart disease in general. Thank you so much. Thank we really you value much. your comments. We really value your time. We'll let you get back downstairs to enjoy the rest of the programme. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.